What's up, peeps? Hey, I am back. Hold on. I always do this. But anyway, I'm back. We are continuing on with the Child's Play franchise. Um, we're on Child's Play 3. This film came out in 1991, so like a year immediately after. So, Andy, who's now 16, is played by a... Uh, um, hold on. I think his name's Justin Whalen. I could be wrong, but that's who plays older Andy in this. So, I like this film. Do I like everything in it? No, but I think it's a largely... Those first three Chucky movies are really an easy breeze to get you, get through. You can watch them as a trilogy. And I'm drinking an IPA. <laughs> so, you can watch them as a trilogy. Because there are some people who I've talked to are like, I'm not a fan of Chucky, like the more comedic stuff. So, yeah, you can, in a way, just watch Child's Play 1 through 3 as a trilogy, to be honest with you. You don't have to necessarily watch the other ones. So, um... Continuing on my schedule, today we're doing Child's Play 3, tomorrow, Bride of Chucky, and then Friday I'm ranking the Nightmare movies. So, so this film kicks off with, um, we were, we're in the same factory where Chucky died in the previous movie. He is being, he basically gets remade into a new doll, and I love the ending where it's like him screaming no because he's like back to being an adult. Then we're cut to a meeting at Play Pals, the company that made the good guy doll. After years of bad publicity because of the whole Chucky fiasco, it's kind of gone down. Chris Sullivan, and the, uh, who's the CEO, they all he decides, you know, we're going to reinstate good, the good guy doll because the good guy doll... And he's like basically your basic villainous CEO. CEO. You know, he only cares about making money and yeah. So now we're back at his house where he's playing golf, then um, he is gifted with a newly refurbished Chucky, which, a uh, good guy doll, which is Chucky. Breaks out, he spills a bunch of models, uh, marbles, makes him trip. He, uh, he then, um, he pours mar marbles, causing Chris to, ch uh, to, to trip. He then uh, whacks him with the, a golf club and throws darts and causes him to paralyze and while Chris is trying to get to the phone Chucky chokes him with a, a like a with like a wire or oh, with a yo-yo so he kills him and then looks for Andy's whereabouts so now and then it's also where we get a good line don't fucks with the Chuck I think that's in this film um so you have some really iconic Chucky lines in this so now we're at the Academy, we're introduced to Andy, who throughout the film they just call him Barkley, um, who's now 16. Uh, in in timeline-wise, this is supposed to be eight years after the events of the second film, So and it only came out a year later, so they had to get a different actor to be Tommy, because Alex, not Tommy, to, um, to be Andy, because um, Alex Vincent was still a kid. And I thought Justin did a decent enough job as Andy. So we are introduced to Colonel Cochran. Pretty much just tells him you gotta be a man and all that. We're introduced to um, Whitehurst, who's like his uh, bunk mate. And then uh, Tyler, who basically is... Chucky starts seeing him. So I'm gonna cut around, because there's not... I'll admit, like, that first hour, not really a lot happens besides a few deaths. So, Tyler is sent, who's uh, this uh, little black kid, is sent to give Andy a gift, which turns out to be a good guy. He opens it up, and it's Chucky, and Chucky decides to use Tyler as a vessel, because Tyler doesn't know about the whole thing. Cochran finds him. We're also introduced to... Um, Fuck, I gotta find this, uh... Cause he's like the dick of the film. Hold on. Oh, Colonel Shelton, who's like, he's one of the better students, uh, and who's like usually in charge of the new recruits. He's like shitty to Andy the whole time. And we're also introduced to, uh... 
Um, hold on, let's find this girl's name. Um, fuck, I'm trying to find it. Sorry, guys. De Silva. Okay, that's what her name is. So her name is De Silva, who she's basically like Andy's love interest. So, um, Colonel Cochran finds, um, Tyler with the doll, so he throws Chucky away into a garbage, who's, uh, truck, he's picking up garbage. Chucky alerts the guy in the truck, because he thinks it's, like, a guy. Chucky ends up locking him into the, the part where they crush the trash, and he dies. Pretty good kill, it's not super bloody or anything. So, that happens, um... Then Chucky confronts, basically, Andy, who's moving into his new uh, bunk room. They have a quick fight, but... Colonel Sheldon, who's like... <clears throat> he's basically a do the douchebag of the film. Um, confronts Andy and takes the doll. <clears throat> so Andy, that evening... Um, while Cochran is uh, Sheldon's sleep... <coughs> Andy tries to sneak into his room and take it, but ends up waking him up. Uh, Sheldon basically makes everybody do, um, he wakes everybody up and makes everybody do, like, exercises. So, um, while this is happening, Chucky goes on to look for Tyler. While this is happening, De Silva and her friend are, like, basically hiding. And Chucky, um, basically, uh, Tyler is making Chucky play hide-and-seek while this is happening to Silva and, uh, I guess a friend of hers, um, are, look, are in, in Cochran's office trying to get information on Andy because she clearly has a crush on him. She's a pretty, pretty cute girl. I think everyone kind of is serviceable in this movie. Um, so Chucky scares Cochran. Well, Cochran goes back into his room, but Chucky, um... Pops out with a knife, and Cochran basically has a heart attack because um, he never saw a living doll before. And I should have mentioned Andy. Uh, while, while this is happening, Tyler meets up with DeSilva, and they paint, like, makeup on Chucky. So that's why, like, Chucky has kind of, like, makeup on. So Cochran dies. Um, the next day, they try to have a, you know, kind of a ceremony. There's a scene where Andy tries to talk to... The fucking Tyler and he gets tripped on very little you know movie tropes where you got a bully kind of deal so he tries to tell Tyler warn Tyler of Chucky Tyler won't listen to it so then they're continuing on with this thing called war games which is basically just them playing with uh it's basically paintball and while this um the general is giving this speech Chucky is uh filling the guns with actual bullets um and then why, oh, before that, Chucky kills, uh, the, this, uh, guy who's, like, shaving everybody. So he, while he's cutting Whitehurst's hair, and White, okay, so Whitehurst walks in, he finds the doll, the general, the, the guy who's cutting the hair. Chucky kills him by slicing him in the throat with a knife, and then Chuck, and then Whitehurst walks in, and Chucky kind of scares him off. So, kind of decent kill. There's some decent kills in this, like, like I said, Chucky's a doll, I'm not expecting, like, Jason or Michael Myers type of kills where he's going to be stabbing people in the walls and shit, you know? But, um, fucking, um, so, then this is the scene where Chucky is in the armory department filling the guns with actual bullets. So, then they go off, each, Sheldon has, has his own team, which is Team Red and then Team Blue, while well, later that night, um, Barkley and uh, De Silva kiss while well, they have a little bit of a quiet moment because people are just telling stories. So De Silva and Andy kiss. After that, Andy steals uh, Shelton's map because he wants to try to find Tyler. And uh, Whitehurst refused to help. Um, when he does happen, um, Shelton finds him. And then, because uh, he thinks he's basically boning it in with the reds so so they they search for barkley um chucky finds tyler 
and initially Chucky wants to play that game. He's trying to be all cool. Then Chucky basically comes out and says he's a bad guy. Uh, Tyler stabs Chucky, and he runs into Barkley, who uh, Chucky ends up holding this Silva hostage with a bomb, with a grenade. So they run into the team. Chucky calls into um, like some kind of walkie-talkie. He basically proposes a trade. I will give back to Silva if you give me Tyler. And then that happens. Um, everything seems fine. And then the red team just turns and starts firing. And it turns out Chucky switched the bullets from the red team. Because they were initially paintball bullets to actual bullets. So uh, Sheldon actually gets shot. So Sheldon gets shot. Um, and amidst the confusion, Chucky... Um, because, like, Sheldon's lieutenant's, like, blaming Andy. So he has, like, Andy choking him or grabbing him by his shirt. Chucky throws the grenade. And uh, Whitehurst sees it and basically makes a... It's a pretty... Honestly, it's a really good scene. Makes a sacrifice. He jumps on it and dies. Then De Silva and Andy basically have to... And they're... I, I love throughout the film, they just call him Barkley. They don't even call him Andy at all in this film. So Andy and um, De Silva go off and find Chucky who's looking for Tyler, they're at some carnival, and uh, Tyler runs into, like, a security guard, um, who Chucky, I guess, kills him off screen, uh, has, uh, so, the, uh, so when that happens, the Silva and Andy find uh, the security guard, they take his gun, and then they go into this, like, ride, like, this voodoo ride, some, like, this weird, like, ride, so, they find Chucky. Chucky shoots uh, De Silva in the leg and basically tells Andy, "You got it. You got to take care of it." Really good final act. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of dig it. I like the whole. They're in like some crazy monster weird ride while this is going on. Chucky has uh, Tyler and he's about to give you know the the voodoo speech he usually gives. Then um. Barkley climbs the mountain, climbing, like, a, a side of a, a fake mountain, you know, like, the for, for, for the set of the ride. Shoots Chucky's arm off. He ends up, uh... Ch Chucky, uh, leaps on Barkley and starts fighting with him. Then, um... Tyler hand Tyler gives Barkley the knife he gave him earlier. He slices Chucky and Chucky off, and basically Chucky falls into a large fan, slicing him in half. There's a part of the film where initially his side of his face gets sliced off, then he fully gets exploded. Then the film ends. Really good film. Like I will say, not a lot happens, but I think it's a good film to watch if you. Like I said earlier, you can kind of watch this film as, like, a trilogy. <coughs> but I really like this film, and I think the kid who played Andy was good, the music was good, the military school was an interesting setting. The characters, are they great? No. Like, I think Andy and B Tyler and De Silva are okay characters. Everyone else is just kind of there, but it's, you know what, I, I find myself watching it. And it's not, it's not terrible. And I like Chucky in it. I think he has some good one-liners. Yeah, there's not, like, a lot of kills. And I will say, t one and two are better movies, but I think this is a fine film. And I would say watch it. Um, tomorrow, um, like I said, we're going to be reviewing Bride of Chucky, which is, my opinion, one, like, I would say my third favorite in the franchise, if I had to rank it right now. Um... So, but this one is no slouch. I like it. Um, I advise if you want to get into Chucky, watch it. <laughs> so I, out of ten, out of ten, I'd give this one, let's give this one like a like a seven point five out of ten. So, but other than that, um. <clears throat> Tomorrow we uh, we're gonna be reviewing Bride of Chucky. Then um, Friday, Nightmare on Elm Street ranking. But other than that, um, that's pretty much it for this video. 
I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Peace. <coughs>